Sure. We're going to do something a little bit differently today. I know you guys listening at home, um, you know, you, we gave Dak, D- Daki, we gave David and Jackie the day off. We've got a guest host sitting next to me and a massive celebrity and just humble, humble, likable dude. So let's get right to it. I want to do your, your introduction first and tell me how much I mess it up. I'm sure I'm going to. Um, our guest today is the dapper cover model and story behind our annual Best Restaurants issue, the pride of Oceanside High School. He had his professional baseball dreams ripped from his heart by a bitchy little thing called the global pandemic. And so he stared into his bathroom mirror and developed a new dream from scratch. He's now... Uh, got 24 million followers, and I'm sure that count went up a few million since the time we started right now. Um, and he just did a video with Kevin Hart. He's a storyteller, funny man, unpretentious food voice, leader of the fast food underground resistance and the fast food embrace movement. He's only in his 20s, but he's been accused of being as looking as old as Red Man, which I think is <laughs> BS. You are a stylish young fellow. Welcome, Jordan Howlett, a.k.a. Jordan the Stallion. Thank you so much. Wow. That Woo! Is- I, you didn't mess it up at all. You, it was quite a nice uh, introduction. Thank right. you very much. All right. That's nice. Thank you for having me. Here. So Jordan is the cover, uh, the cover model of our best restaurants issue, and it was a, you know, you've kind of become a voice of, you know, how to, to, uh, you know, hack fast foods, you know, and and you're you're cooking on on TikTok, and you and everybody's been following you in the food space for a long time. And I love the fact that we did a dichotomy because a lot of our best restaurants are like in the high, high, high end space, food space, right? So we put you in one of our favorite omakase sushi joints, Ken. May, and that cover turned out great. That brings me to the guy that's a guest host for the day. This, um, we're going to talk about Jordan's life in a sense, but no one better to do that than our guest host, a graduate of UC Berkeley journalism. He's written for Harper's, Rolling Stone, McSweeney's, worked at Al Jazeera doing the digital content, wrote two books for McSweeney's. He's David. He's got David Bolton level long hair that he keeps in an adorable bun. A kid named Wilder who stares at you. <laughs> Michael, Michael. Uh, oh, wait, oh, wait. Yeah, he's got Michael <laughs> Bolton style long hair that he keeps Both in an adorable bun. He's, his kid stares at you like he's waiting for you to impress him. He's the best little kid in the world. He wrote the cover story on Jordan for our new issue of San Diego Mag. Executive editor, Mateo Hoke. Welcome, brother. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's a fun thing to be here. It's my first podcast as well. You know that, you that. I love that. Dude, two I'm, rookies. Yeah, here. two rookies, it. man. Bringing you, you guys in. <laughs> you got to put it. us on your shoulders, Troy. You got you to get us I'm through with this. It. Okay, all right. So basically what we're going to do, I, I want to start, tell us a little bit about, I mean, you've got such an arc, Jordan, that I, I love hearing your story. Go, take us back to like uh, childhood in Oceanside in San Diego. Um, I mean, what was, what was your childhood like here? Oh my gosh. Uh, it was that's a small question. No, right? of course. A real, yeah. real tiny one. Real good. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's the answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, honestly, growing up here has been one of the best things I think uh, our family you know, has done just collectively. And, and yeah. it's because beforehand we were in the high desert. Um, okay. You know, of course, just trying to make it work. And my mom worked for a, uh, like a mailbox company yeah. and they gave us the opportunity to, you know, move out here to San Diego and have operations down here. So they took us out when I was around like maybe fourth grade and my brother was about two, three years older. And then we moved to San Diego. We moved, I didn't know where, I didn't know what, San Diego was, I didn't know what it looked like, I had no idea, yeah. I didn't know where we were going. And so, you know, us being in Oceanside, it was very interesting. Because again, we're used to the desert, we're used to really hot or super cold where your things are, uh-huh. like the, the pipes are frozen in the morning and then at, at the time it gets to the afternoon, it's 100 degrees. So I'm used to that all the time. Yep. So going here where it's like 70 degrees every day, I'm like, all right, well, like where's the catch? When does, it, when does, <laughs> when does 100 degrees happen? It has to happen at some point. Like it was very yeah. interesting, but, um, Again, kind of growing up here has been a big blessing, a gigantic learning curve. Because again, like also culture is different here. People are different here. You know? Yeah, for sure. And you, with, you, with your brother, okay, what's the dynamic between your brother? I mean, you've got to have somebody's the one that keeps it all together and keeps all the toys in the car from flying out in the window, oh, you know, sure. and someone's the class clown. Oh, you would have thought. No, I know my, I was, I was very much a sh- like the straight man. I was very much like, I didn't joke around a lot. My brother was the comedian of our of our family really him and my mom are both very good at just joke telling and always having something to say and all you know always like the quick stuff they're always good with it me and my father both we were very like very serious about stuff we didn't yeah. joke much uh, at all you know and the, and the good a balance of that is because we were like that we were always focused on you know what what has to get done what needs to get done what has to happen so uh, that was a dynamic for a long time and then growing up 
I'd say probably when I was like I think sixth or seventh grade is when I started getting into more like oh I could tell some jokes and some people would laugh. You've been and quietly like, oh. studying your brother for a little while. You know, okay. For funny enough, I love him so much. Love him so much. He knows this. <laughs> but I, I I did not ever find my brother funny until recently. <laughs> until recently. But uh, growing up, every time my brother tell a joke, I'm like, oh that is not funny. Like, I'm just mm-hmm. not with it. Everyone else liked it, but then because of that, I told myself, like, all right, well then what is funny, Jordan? If he's not doing it, what do you, what what is there that should be funny? And so that's what kind of got me questioning. Like, I want to tell jokes different from my brother and see if those work. And uh, obviously, my brother's hilarious. He's he's very funny, very quick, very smart. We talk about it. Where yeah. I have an appreciation of it now. Yeah. Because I now know how certain comedies can work. When I was younger, I liked specific things because they were so funny to me. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you go ahead. Next. Well, I mean, we're this is a food podcast, and food has played such a big role in your development as a creator, mm-hmm. but also just as like a human. Right, yes. working in kind of low wage fast food jobs for a period. Very much. Um, so yeah, I you know my question just says food. Period. Love uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> love that. That's what my that's my that's what my bulletin board says every and day. And go. All right, what are we doing today? Food. That's yeah. my thing. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I I would love to hear you just kind of speak on that, like uh, the about the relationship that food has played in your development, just as someone who had to pay rent mm-hmm. and someone who is now you know, very much in the food space mm-hmm. in terms of content creation. And even as a kid, too. Like, I mean, was your parents cooks? Oh, my gosh. My mom is the best cook I, I know. I, I feel like for a lot of people, their mothers are, or even their fathers, best cooks oh, my mom's a know. terrible cook. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I get <laughs> <laughs> um, No, I was always so intrigued growing up of why my mom was so, like, I'm like, how do you know how to make everything? I'd never seen her open a cookbook. She just knew how to do things. And I was like, how do you do that? And for me... Uh, my connection with food started when I was younger with my grandmother. I, I like baking. It's I've been always baking grandma. For, yeah, I've been baking for years. I've been baking since I was around ten years old. Up to now, I still bake, and that was my thing. I loved sweets. I loved making stuff like that because baking it's different. Baking is yeah. like a very specific things you need in this dish to make it work. Cooking it's a bit. You got some wiggle room. If yeah. there's something going on, you can add some to kind of level things out. You baking. can't off-road in baking. No, 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 no. A little bit too much on yeast, a little bit too much on baking powder, soda, you're done. Like, you know what I mean? They got to restart. But you made a hockey puck. Very much. Yeah. You make a hockey yeah. puck, exactly. And then you got to eat it because, like, well, I'm not going to waste it. So, <laughs> um, But that was my connection with food was that it brought me and my grandma together very much. And then seeing my mom do it, I always was appreciative of how he was, she was able to do that. And when I got older – when you get older, like everybody does, you then realize the circumstances your parents were in raising you. Yeah. Like the money that was coming in or the, or the hardships that they were having. And they still every day had to figure out, how am I going to feed my kids every yeah. single day? And so and now you, did, knowing, you didn't come from a, a ton of money. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I didn't realize how creative my parents were mm-hmm. until I realized just how much we were really struggling. And I was like, whoa, this is very interesting. You get a deep appreciation oh for what gosh, people have yes. to go through. Just to, I mean, not only just take care of themselves, and you got two kids now. Right, no, going on the fourth. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, if people see me, I promise you, they're thinking, like, this guy's a parent. No, I'm still in my 20s. Uh, this is the pinnacle of youth right here. Look at that. Get, get a <laughs> zoom in on the. Your kids are in the, college, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, my kids are in college. One's, you know. <laughs> One, him and I were both coworkers now, but yeah, you see the, you see the wrinkles. We're there, um, no, but uh, my my mom, uh, my mom, I understood very recently as well. It's like okay, every single day you have kids growing boys that need to eat, that need their substance, they need to make sure that they're getting what they're getting for school, supplies, everything, and on the on what they were getting paid and what they needed to do for us. I, it, again, it was just so impressive to think about and. Uh, and also, like, you know, the role that my grandparents played. Of course, I mean, it takes a village, right? So my grandparents helped a lot. I didn't realize. I thought we just really liked hanging out with our grandparents every other time. I'm like, oh, cool. Just going to go see. <laughs> okay, cool. Like, you never thought circumstantially. Right. The village coming together. The, the village coming. Yeah, you never know. Because as a kid, I mean, you're, you got your own things to worry about. Like, oh, like, when's a new episode of Ed and Eddie coming out? You don't care about <laughs> Other things until later, so yeah. It's That's really interesting because you you kind of made your name on you know in a lot of these videos, you mm-hmm. know, the fast food secrets club. I, I yes, indeed. Yeah. I mean, it, the kind of hacking the system, you yes. know, and which parents had to do very much. You know, very I mean, they had so. to get really creative and get really, really resourceful in order to you know take care of the family. <laughs> No, exactly, and that's how I feel about the pizza I as well. Just put, <laughs> no, I just put an entire pickle pizza down Jordan's throat. <laughs> he did. So. He did. He did. The question got us all juiced up. He threw it across the room. I so. know. That's it. It was impressive. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that's that's what really. Why we, that's kind of why I was so intrigued by you know little hacks and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. My mom loves my, my mom loves a good 
a good coupon, a good workaround. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, again, my mom, funny enough, she worked at a pizza place when we were still in the high desert, and she would come back every night and bring boxes of pizza home. Okay. And I was like, "How are you doing that?" She's like, "Yeah, you do it all. You just stay out there, and then like after this happens, you take the waste, you put it in here. Like teaching me these things as yeah. I'm super young. So I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. Like there's workarounds to you know jobs and stuff." And then when I was working and I didn't have a lot of money, I wouldn't spend my money on food. I would just take the food that I was at the working at the place. I'd take that food home, eat for that, for sure. Up, save my money, use it for gas or whatever else I needed. So yeah, hacks are always appreciated. That, that's the same way I was. So I, you know, okay. So I want to go to the transformative moment. I, if you guys. Um, you know, haven't seen uh, Jordan's TEDx talk. Yes. Um, I love that, by, by the way. I thought it was, it was fantastic about, you know, altering your dreams or being open to other um, manifestations of your own dreams, right? Yes, you know, and not always just getting dogged on one different idea. But in 16 years old, you've never played baseball in your entire life. No. And you, <laughs> many, many kids have been traveling on teams and had their blood analyzed for micronutrients and yes. corn chips. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you are too much corn chip, not enough micronutrients. I need more <laughs> You'll chia never seed. make it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> no, we've seen what professional what youth sports has become. It's become the science and this factory of building you know, young athletes. I mean, it's almost I mean, too intimidating. But at age 16, you decide you want to be a professional baseball player and you've never actually stepped on the field. What the? Talk to us a little bit about that. <laughs> Um, well, like Matea and I talked about early on where I was explaining how with baseball, um, it was, again, I wanted to play sports. I We went to schools where sports wasn't a thing. There wasn't prevalent, like it wasn't around. And I always saw a lot of my friends that go to different schools play sports. And I was like, well, that's cool. And I didn't realize, like, you know, if you were a professional athlete, like every professional athlete I saw, like they t their parents are taken care of. They got a big house. They got all the things they mm -hmm. need. And I was like, oh, well, I want to do that. I want to do that for my family. I, I want to be the guy that I'd like to live comfortably. I would like to live comfortably. I'm like, yeah. and if I could do it with something as cool as playing a sport, I got a cool jersey. As a young kid, I'm like, <laughs> you did yeah, it with a jersey. Like, yeah, I'm like, the it's jersey's all about the cool. Fit. Like, yeah. let's do it, right? So, and again, also growing up, I mean, I, I mean, I got picked on a lot. I was not a cool kid in the eyes of other kids. Same I'm brother, same. Super dorky kid. So, like, when you're trying to be like, how do I be cool? You're like, dude, every pro athlete is the coolest guy in the room. Like, I want to. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of incentives as a kid. So I was like, I want to play sports, and I told my dad. And again, at the time, I just thought he was being super unfair. He's like, yeah, sure, soon, soon, later, later. And I'm like, why is it always later? Not realizing sports is really expensive. Expensive. Incredibly yeah. expensive. So I was like, okay. Then I asked him as we were moving to San Diego, I was like, can we play sports? And he's like, sure, like, just keep waiting on it. Before when we got to San Diego, I went to a school, John Muir School. I believe they changed the name of it to like John Muir. They changed the name. But I went mm -hmm. to that school, and it was a K-12 school, no sports. And by the time I was a freshman in, uh, in high school, tra transitioning to a sophomore in high school, I told my dad, like, hey, my brother's graduated. It's just me going to school now. I want to transfer to an actual high school with sports, and I want to play sports. Mm -hmm. He was very nervous because in his eyes, you know, I mean, I'm his kid. He doesn't see me as a you know six-foot-two potential athlete. He sees me as his child. So he's right. like, I don't want you to get hurt. And I said, "I like, let me do this, please. Yeah. Right? And so originally... I was thinking maybe football. I'll give that a try. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm on, I'm at the school. I'm on my way to the football field, and uh, the football coach, or sorry, the baseball coach sees me, and again, you know, he's this bald, kind of like stocky guy. He goes, "Hey, where are you going?" I was like, "Oh, I'm going to the football field. I'm going to try out." And he goes, points me right at the baseball field. He's like, "Why don't you go over there?" And I said, "Okay." So the whole day, I'm thinking like, "Wow, football players practice on a baseball field." They <laughs> They are. I'm like these guys are athletes. This that, is crazy. That's the secret this sauce. This is the secret sauce. It's, it's like, like I'm learning. Uh, and again, I, I, my first day, I had a very thick green flannel, similar to your cons the consistency for your flannel. Yeah. Um, big and one shorts, like my good, like low basketball shorts. Perfect Gig for playing baseball. Perfect, yeah. right? And this yeah. is like back in the day shorts, like '90s, so they're gigantic. Oh yeah. And, uh, and mind you, I'm super skinny, and I had big old, uh, you know, hand-me-down Air Jordans. So I walk up to the field, and a gigantic afro, too. Mm -hmm. I had a big old afro. It was so dense, I had no hats getting on it. <laughs> you kept stuff in there. Kept stuff in there, right, yeah. you know, <laughs> pencils and whatnot. And so um, I, get to, I get to the field, and everybody's confused. They're like, are you lost? I'm like, no, yeah. I'm here to try out for the baseball team, mm -hmm. I guess, because this is baseball now. And he's <laughs> like, all right, cool. And, uh, you know, my first day of practice was awful. It yeah. was the worst thing 
it couldn't have been anything else. Oh, I mean, oh my If gosh. you would have gone out there, I mean, yeah, I would have been very, very upset. Oh, if I would, if <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? it's uh, it's actually in in the feature. I do talk to your friends. Yes, um, I talked to one of your friends, and I actually talked to um, uh, Jeremiah Luster, who was a Love scout, um, who had kind of Jordan on his radar, who you maybe Early consulted on. with, at, like how do I do this kind of thing. I, I'll tell you what, I feel really bad uh, in regards to Jeremiah because early on, I mean, my dad. You know, because my dad's very protective of us, so yeah. I had major trust issues, mm-hmm. like for the longest time. Even now, I'm getting better at it. But I had major yeah. trust issues, and Jeremiah genuinely was like, "Hey, like I see you working hard. You know, let me." He's like, "Oh, you know, I could teach you certain help. things. I could help you out." And he's yeah. like, "You know, some super simple, like maybe like ten bucks a month." Yeah. All I heard was ten bucks a month, and we go, we have no money. So I was like, "No, I'm good." I thought he was just trying to scam me because I right, right again for me, sure. ten bucks a month is a lot. So I was like, yeah. "No." Um, not knowing that, I mean, for lessons like that, that's way more than ten dollars a month. He was really trying to help me, but right. I didn't know until I was already a grown man at that point. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, Jeremiah's always kind of been around. He was a pivotal factor, and yeah, he was. Stuff. He was always. He, he was a. He's out. an MLB scout Don who Banks. had you know kind of Jordan on his radar from from a young age, and mm-hmm. Jeremiah told me for the story that mm-hmm. Jordan was just objectively horrible, <laughs> but. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate that. But, buddy. <laughs> but here's what stands out that he is in 16 years of being a scout, he's never seen someone work this hard. Mm-hmm. And so that's like kind of the thing that stuck out to me is like, I mean, that's a big statement. 16 years of scouting, he's never seen someone work this hard. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's how you get to become a D1 baseball player, right? Very much. And then, and then what? Um, well, I mean, yeah, first off, I, again, I appreciate the comments of Jeremiah. He texted me recently, and I, I, I had no idea he talked to you. That's really cool. That's a nice surprise. And I, I'm i happy to hear that because, I mean, that's really all – that's what it took. I mean, again, the amount of work that it took to do it was – I really at, at times don't think words can really do it justice because the feelings and the emotions that you go through – and I tell people this. I, I make jokes that I, you know, I might seem older than my years, but it ages you a lot. Yeah. It ages you quicker than you want to. You lose your sense of being – you know kind of like a youthful kid at times because this is a big this is a big thing you need to do yeah. if you want to be a professional athlete there's so many things that you have to learn if you're 16 years behind yeah that you have to cut out relationships you have to cut out a lot of things in order to try to do it you're going to say you're going to hear a lot of no's you're yeah. going to hear a lot of very hurtful things and you just have to like again like barrel through them and a lot of people when you're a young kid then you're looking for somebody like you guys both give an energy of like, I trust you. I like mm-hmm. you guys. Like, thank you for like, I need someone to help me with this. Right. Yeah. I yeah. didn't have that. And I needed it as a kid. And when I realized in this sport, you're not going to get a lot of that. You have to be your own person to take yourself under your wing in a way. Sure. Um, again, that ages you. Cause you have to be like, all right, I got to be my well, own battery. And here. especially starting, starting at that age, I mean, you're starting at 16 years old and you're walking onto that field. It's like the kid who stands on, you know, on the edge of the playground is like, I'm going to fly. Oh, it's yeah. like, okay, sure, kid, oh, you're yeah. not going to fly. Oh, no, and, you know, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, too, and again, uh, getting older, and I know you guys have experienced this, too, where you then start to see things from other people's perspectives. At time, at the time I was in the heat of it all, I'm like, why did everybody just not like me? Like, why did they not want to? I wanted to be everybody's friend. They were not with it. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Because for them, they've been playing this since they were four years old three years old with the same guys coming all the way up trying to achieve the same dream i'm achieving Mm -hmm. and so i'm this kid 16 uh, walking in saying i'm gonna be a professional just like you guys yeah they're thinking that probably like i'm just disrespecting the sport yeah Yeah, they probably think i think this thing is so easy and i could just do it yeah so maybe there is just a disconnect and we're both Mm -hmm. we're all young men so I mean, I that's all young men are is disconnects. It's all dis- <laughs> it's just all disconnect. Everything's disconnected. <laughs> yes, everything's disconnected. So, um, as I got older, I then realized, you know, I I can understand the animosity, but at the time when you're going through it, you just don't get and it. You, get, you you got some shit. And, and I, will, I will say this: you have a fantastic personality, you know. And I think that a lot, a lot of times, I mean, it needs that you need that hardship to get develop that kind of personality and develop that sense of humor too. For sure. You know, I mean, if you're getting bullied, if you're getting kicked, you're getting, you know, you learn to, you know, amuse yourself to c- comfort yourself. Hundred percent. To you know, and I, and I think that kind of com- comes through in the kind of work that you do and that kind of person personality that you show on TikTok. Yes, the, so to walk you guys who are listening at home through this story. 
story a little bit. So Jordan walks on at 16 years old, and he's like, I want to play D1 baseball. And in your TED Talk, you talk about the percentage of, of possibility of making it the majors is like you know 3% or something like that, or 1%. I forget what it is. Uh, you probably know what it is. It's one. Uh, and then when you make it to D1, it goes up to 7 or 9% <laughs> chance. Yes, yes. Dramatic difference. Dramatic yeah. difference. <laughs> So you go, and then I want to talk. I would like for you to kind of you know, paint a picture for us about what the experience was like. You go to a community college, and I, I believe, and to correct me if I'm getting this incorrect, um, but you you basically have no money to your name. I mean, no. you, you're 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 going to school. You are sleeping in your car. You're going to a, a food court and getting the food that's kind of coming off the back line, right? Yes. You know, the, the food that's left over. You were doing every single thing that you possibly can. You're working out three times a day. You're yes. showering in the gym. Yes. Gym at the time that was you're basically ad hocing, stitching and duct taping a life together because this is your dream to become a professional baseball player. And you do anything, and one of the things that stuck out to me the most, and again, you're really you're really new with this sport. You 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 figured if you could drink water, the way you said, the way I drank water, the way I walked, that yes. was about my future. Every single thing you did had to have in the intent of becoming a D1 baseball player, right? Yes, what was that part of your life like? I mean, we're, I'd imagine stressful, lonely, full of dreams. I, I mean, talk to me, talk me through it. Um, you said it perfectly. The key word there being, um, and not as like a negative way, but just kind of an objective way, lonely. It's very yeah. lonely because yeah. you're right. It's from the water, like in the water you drink, to two gallons a day, to the way that you walk, you walk on your toes to build your calf strength, all these things. I'm, I'm very serious. Like, this is how you have to think. For the way that you're standing, you're pivoting your hips to make sure that you know you can shift your hips when you're at the plate. From the way that you are holding a pen or a pencil to make sure that you have your knuckles aligned with each other when you're holding a bat, so that's muscle memory. When you're seeing a 98, 99 mile an hour pitch, you cannot think, you have to react. So mm -hmm. your reactions need to be fundamentally sound. So everything has to encompass baseball. Yeah. So because of that, from the conversations that I'd have with people, at some point, like if it wasn't productive towards something that we were doing for each other, I just didn't want to be a part of it. Yeah. Parties I wouldn't go to unless I'm helping somebody get home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it just uh, sleeping at the time, sleeping was a tool. I needed 10 hours of sleep to develop my body if I worked out a lot and I had those muscle fiber develops, all that. So because of that, you're right, very lonely because yeah. very few amount of people understood what it took. Saul and I know that Mateo, I talked to Saul of course, and uh, um, Saul and a, and a really good buddy of mine, his name is Jason. Uh, these are probably the only two guys that kind of understood the method to the madness. Yeah. So those are probably the only two people that I would maybe talk to once every couple of weeks and be like, hey, like this is what are go going on. And they would understand it. Everybody else, they would just see me as like, why are you trying so hard? Like we are in college, relax. Like a lot of people they yeah. didn't really yeah. see it that way. For me, I didn't see it as I'm in college, I gotta relax. I see it as I'm graduating in a couple of years and I need to get some done. So, yeah. Yeah. And so you, you do all of this stuff and you finally make it, you, you walk on for a D1 school. Yes. You walk on and it, the, the walk-ons, as you said, they have to, they, the schools have to do it. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a mandatory requirement, mm -hmm. but they kind of hold it and they're like, ha, 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 welcome here. Yeah, you're not going to make the team. Pretty much. <laughs> tell, tell me, <laughs> right? Yes, that's yeah. exactly, exactly what it is. Yeah. And that was the one thing I'm like, that's my leverage. You have to, ha, ha. You're now saying like, there's a chance. Oh, <laughs> exactly. You tell me there's a chance. Um, yeah, yeah. I am uh, like every ball player will tell you baseball, football, doesn't matter. Your last resort is a walk on. You yeah. want every single chance you got to be either preferred walk on or ideally a recruit. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you're going to be on that team. And that's what high school all is, is make sure you find a team you can live at. And for me, I, I exhausted every single thing option. I emailed. I, I Again, with baseball, there's a lot of background work. So with baseball, it's you can look at the performance factor mm -hmm. or you can look at the potential factor, sometimes both. Yeah. For baseball, uh, it's funny, a friend of mine pretty much said this perfectly. For baseball, there's some people that have to prove that they can't play. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Just from the, your look the alone, they're like, I think alone. we want you. Right? Mm -hmm. I knew that my strength was something that was abnormal. And to, to put that into um, f facts that mm -hmm. I learned from your TED Talk, mm -hmm. in that, I forget how, I think it was one year, yes. of which he worked out three days, uh, three times a day, mm -hmm. you know, and at, I mean, you walked on your tiptoes to develop your calves, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you developed 20 pounds of muscle weight in one single year and could hit a baseball 440 something yards. Yes. No. Yes, sir. My God. Feet. Yeah. I mean, 450 feet. Yeah, that's. Well, 450 yeah, I mean, he's not breaking world records. Right. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's nothing crazy. <laughs> So he could, Jordan could hit a baseball 1,200 feet. <laughs> yes, right. No, of course. 
Um, Half a mile. Basic, yeah, basic baseball stuff. Uh, <laughs> So you walk, so you walk on, and you're 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 just kind of an athletic, right? your athletic uh, gift at that point, right? And um, that's I would say yes. Yeah, strength wise, was definitely something that I, you know, as I started gaining it, I realized it wasn't normal. Right. Um, everything else very under underwhelming. <laughs> I was, you know, my arm strength was very, uh, you know, under par, and um, I was I was fast for my size. But again, it wasn't anything jumping off the page. My strength was, th- and my strength and my hands were really fast. Yeah. So for playing baseball, if you have fast hands, that kind of bypasses Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn, he was right behind you there. Mm-hmm. Tony Gwynn again, a fantastic hitter because his hands were really fast. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, even if you pick up a pitch late, your hands can catch up to it. Yeah. And so for me, the reason why a lot of those balls got hit really hard and really far is because it wasn't necessarily just the power as much as it was the stable power and the speed of which that that bat goes through the zone. Yep. And so because of that, I knew that was my that defining factor. So when I went to walk on, right, yeah. that was the last resort. I had to do it. I, I lied to my parents. I love you. I'm sorry. And said that I had it. <laughs> said that I had enough to pay just for the, you know, the segmented um, payments for tuition. Yep. I only had enough for that first payment for the first quarter of tuition. And that was all the money you had. That's all the money I had. This is so your, I you put everything in this dream of the walk on. Everything. It, I want to say... It was like twelve hundred dollars, roughly around there. I gave it all to the school, and that gave that bought me two months before the next payment. I didn't know payments, you know, hit your account earlier. Be like, hey, just remind you, you owe us as much. I didn't know right, that. Right. So the two months it fell within the time frame of a tryout. So I was hoping I do the tryout, I make the team, I get a scholarship, and we can make it work. And if not, I have no idea what's going to happen. Sure. Next. I just don't want to think about it. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where I was at. And so when I did the tryout before the tryout actually had started. There was a camp that they had over the summer. I knew I wasn't ready, and I knew I was really bad. But <laughs> I, but I knew I'm like those are two very confident, two building great things, things that. <laughs> I know, was a camera. Two great things. Um, <laughs> no, I knew I was really bad, and so I went. Everyone's telling me why are you going, and I said because I want them to see how bad I am. Because by the next mm-hmm. time I do the walk on, and they see how much I've improved in a short amount of time, they can see that I'm coachable and I can I can improve. So it's okay if I do bad, but I need to go. Mm-hmm. So I went. I did awful. And I'm like, great, according to plan. And so I did I did awful. <laughs> and I talked to the coach right before the actual tryout. And the coach told me, the coach of the team told me, he said, look. And he sat me down. We, we were on the field together. We sat down on, on the bleachers, just him and myself. And he's talking to me about this. And he's like, all right, so, you know, I know you're going to walk on. But he's like, we have a team of 30 people. And in order to be a walk-on and make the team, you cannot be better than the 30th guy. You need to be better than the first guy we have. You need to be better than the best than the guy. The number one there. guy we have as in order a for me walk-on, to walk on. right? Which so, I, so your whole your whole life is 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 playing the the good odds. Of course, yeah, of course, <laughs> fantastic. I'm like, oh, I'm good then, because um, I would be here if I was better than your first guy. Uh, but um, no, if I was better than the first guy, I'd probably be a pro. But yeah. um, he said you have to be better than the first guy, and I said, okay, cool. Um, I think he might have said that to deter me, but I was like, all right, fine. Like, well, I'm already here. So I'm getting ready for the walk on. We had our number. He had my number at the time. So I'm, I'm shopping for some food to get ready f- to, to get everything going. And he texts me because I asked him information about the walk on. And yeah. he's like, hey, he pretty much said, like, I, I love the I love the passion on it. He's like, but you're pretty much not going to make the team. So yeah. you don't have to worry about this stuff. You can just. You know, go live. You can go out there and life. dance. If yeah, you want. Like, yeah, 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 oh, for sure. You can do a whole dance number if you Have want. You heard of TikTok? Right. Yeah, he was like, exactly. Well, I got the idea for you, pickle pizza. Yeah. No, but um, he was like, he was like uh, he was like you're pretty much not going to make the team, so you don't have to really worry about that. And so that's when I had said like when the coach of the team is telling you yeah. you're not going to make it, you would just have to have more faith in yourself. When I did the interview with Cam Newton, and he told me that he was like. He was like, okay, so you're just crazy. And I'm like, pretty much. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, <laughs> there's more than faith happening here. This is more than just like, I have real faith in no, myself. No, this is a little delusion. borderline delusion. Yeah, it's it a, really there's is. a bit of delusion. <laughs> but, I mean, again, at that Useful point. Useful delusion. Of course. Yeah, yeah. At that point, I'm just like, hey, like, let's get it going. Let's, see it. let's just see mm-hmm. what we got. So I went there. I put it all on that field. It's so funny. And, I, and, I, and I'll, I'll keep this very... You know, anonymous. Oh, you can sit. You can talk for an hour. And, oh, anonymous. Yeah, okay. very yeah, yeah, anonymous yeah. on this one. Yeah. Um, the day, and he knows what I'm talking about. I, I, they were good friends now. Yeah. But the day of the walk on, it was me and another person. It was just two people. Yeah. Out at this walk on, we're getting ready, and he's asking me like, "Oh, like, you know, what's your name?" Blah blah blah. I'm telling him my whole thing, kind of telling my story, and he cuts me off halfway. And he goes, "Oh, okay, so you're a nobody. I got you." And I was like. <laughs> 
You're right, sir. I really am. I might be punked right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, my people talk like this. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, sure. He's no, like, that doesn't feel very kind, but you no, might be right. Not at all. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I, maybe he thought of it was like, hey, we're really competitive. We're in this competitive space. So, you know, we got to do what we got to do. But yeah. um, he came up with that energy. And he's kind of telling me, he's like, you see that? You see that sign right there? Mine's, mm-hmm. My ball's going right over that thing. And I'm like, that's okay. Cool. Okay, like, cool. I'll great. try to put mine there, too. Yeah, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. awesome. I was just trying to get everything set up. And he's like, yeah, you know, I know some of the players and blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool. Like, great to know these yeah, things yeah but so that, it was that energy at the For field sure. already so i was like all right let me just do what i do i so, mean you're getting dressed down i mean you already been told by the coach dude at, the, at this point leading all the way up to the actual minute of the trial there's because there's somebody there being like you're a nobody so i'm like okay it's um, like shame shame you know what i'm saying shame. so where i really was asking like did i make somebody very angry in the past <laughs> life like it's this is wild so um we did the we did the tryout um i left it all on that field and I, I, I showed a lot of my strength, a lot of my speed for my size. I showed a lot of passion. And a lot and of that don't die. A lot of it doesn't die. And I'll tell you what, I, I was very proud of myself because I left that saying, I left everything on that field. Mm-hmm. So if they didn't want me, that they, they don't want the best versions of me. So yeah. that's all I got. And so the coach said that for the way that they do it is you got seven days. Or something like that. Okay. He said, you got seven days. Is this okay? This is in range? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, you got seven days. Um, if we call you in seven days, then we want you on the team. If you don't hear a call from anybody in seven days, we don't want you and don't come back and bugging us about yep. it. So I was like, okay, that's really yeah. nerve-wracking. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and again, the money part was I didn't have a cell phone. I had an yeah. iPod. So I had an yeah. iPod with a texting app. A texting app that gives you like know a little, did that. Yeah, okay. gives you a little throwaway number that you can kind of use. Yeah. And so you need to be next to a really strong Wi-Fi signal for anyone to call that number. Got it. So that's yeah. the whole situation I had with that. So I needed to be next to a Wi-Fi signal for seven days, because if they called the number and I didn't pick it up, then well, what did you go next to a Starbucks? No, I was I was standing next to the field. I was okay. next to the actual was, baseball field. I mean, you were th- at this point you were sleeping. I was in, in the car. A uh, ninety-seven. What was it? Chevy. Oh, a ninety-seven Chevy Suburban. Yeah. I still have it. That's three hundred thousand okay. miles on it. Oh, actually, nice. I, after this interview, I'm gonna go and pick it up. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was sleeping there. I was sleeping yeah. there, and I was right next to the field, um, you know, with that Wi-Fi signal, and I was just waiting. I was just waiting. You're day sleeping by day. in your car. Yes, everything sir. you've ever dreamed of. You got seven day waiting period, yes. and you've got this. Not even a phone. Mm-hmm. You've, you've got an iPod mm-hmm. that's got this kind of you know ad hoc text this texting function. Very much. You know, <laughs> waiting for the Wi-Fi signal to possibly get. and. Did you really think? I mean, I know that you, you felt like you had a good day on that trap, but I mean, did you really actually think you were going to get that call? Or I mean, seven days to sit there kind of alone with your thoughts, you know, oh, yeah. and this is the biggest moment of your your dream. That Young you life. Yeah. yeah. Very much. Um, I'll tell you what. It, uh, I wanted to have the most confidence I was going to make the team, but at the same time, I leaned really hard into, like, you know, my faith where it's like, hey, you know what, it's – it is what it is. If I make mm-hmm. it, I make mm-hmm. it. If I don't, I don't. But I cannot think about my performance anymore. I can't yeah. think about anything outside of let me see if I get a phone call. Because in the middle of all this, the school's like, hey, you owe us $3,000. The payment's coming up. And I'm like, oh, I have no money. Oh, so you get that text. I got that text first. I'm like, oh, yeah. cool, the school. Oh, no, it's not what I want. Yeah. He's like, you owe $3,000. I said, okay, cool. And then uh, I was never, I wasn't used to quarter systems at school. I was used to semester systems. Yeah. So because of that semester system, you can build your grade up from doing a lot of assignments. And then mm-hmm. when a test happens, you got some time to look, wiggle room here. A quarter system, you get your first test in like the second week. Yep. If you fail that test, you are pretty much like, like room to fail that class. Goodbye. Yeah, you yeah. only got like probably three or four tests to do good. Yeah. So I failed my first test because I didn't know what was happening and I was very sleep deprived and very hungry and I was like, I, I was out of it. So I'm failing my classes. I owe the school $3,000. Everybody that thinks I'm already on the team for some reason is like, hey, great job. Like, they're giving me all, and I don't want to be like, well, actually, I'm mm-hmm. just trying to, yeah. I'm just trying to function. So uh, there's times I'm I mean, we know this. We just we just had in the podcast before this, we had Feeding San Diego on. We talked a lot of it about this. And just able to function, you need nutrition. You're, you, don't, you don't have any money at this point. I have You're really not no eating money. very well. You're probably not sleeping very well in the back of a, a not suburban. At all. Not at all. And then? Um, yeah, then the the night of that sixth day um i mean i'm in tears i'm hoping and praying i'm like please i just i never wanted anything else in my life as much as this because and uh, and the main thing and i said in the ted talk and i truly meant this i want i wanted to tell people clarify what i mean by this is the biggest thing was i did not want everybody to be right 
mm-hmm. that that was what because I mean I was wrong about so many things I was bad at so many things I failed at a lot of things this seven year journey where everybody is telling me like you are not good to do this you are not good to be on these teams you're not good to make this level I just didn't want them to be right about this because yeah, I put so sure. much into it so the that next morning I kept having reoccurring dreams or one day I'd get uh, one dream I get a call one dream I didn't one dream I get a call one dream I didn't oh, so God. I woke up not knowing if this was real or not or a dream or I didn't know if it was a dream or real and I got the yeah. phone call from my little iPod and I was like okay and I answered and this is the coach I still don't know if this is real life yet so I'm like okay and he's like can you come to the field in 15 minutes I'm like absolutely and I just walked out my car and I was like I was like <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you gotta I'm, I'm literally here already. I'm literally <laughs> I'm like, I really was so uh, I knock on the door. They let me. They they bring me into the office, and it's Coach Percival. He's our head coach at the time, um, and he he was just so intrigued. He's like, "So what's like, what's your deal, man? Like, because he saw my footage. He saw again a lot of raw potential. He also saw obviously a lot of holes in my play because sure. I'm you know pretty sure. novice. And he's like, "What's your deal?" And I'm like, "You know, I told my whole spiel. Not like the not the circumstances I was in. I just told sure. him like, hey, like, you know, relatively newer to the baseball itself, but you know, I'm willing to." put my best foot forward and I, you know, I'm willing to, to work on all these things. Yeah. And he was saying that funny enough, they were asking about me at the front offices. They were just like, Oh, like they had mentioned me in passing, but the people at the front office, like really, really liked the fact that I was just very kind to them. Mm-hmm. When we were doing the sign up process, doing everything. I just, obviously I'm a firm believer in everybody, you know, treat everyone with kindness. Yeah. And you know, I just wanted to talk to them and see how their day was going, and just say hi every day. It didn't matter if I was, you know, three thousand dollars in the hole and stressing. Sure. That does. That's not an excuse for me to not give you. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, that's never an excuse. So, I, you know, that stood out to the coach before anything and else. And that matters. It mattered heavily. Character like, matters a he, lot on a team. Exactly. Obviously. And that's what he said. He said your character outside of this field has been. Is, it keeps getting back to me before I even get to see your footage. And he was like, it, "That's something that." He's like, "I love that." And he mm-hmm. looked at my footage, and he's like, uh, can you go to the cages? I want to see you hit. I want Coach Johnson, actually, to come see you hit and see just if you're coachable. It's like 99 degrees. We're in there. I'm in my pajamas, and I'm hitting like I'm buckets of sweat. I'm just hitting, trying to show them I could do these things. And underfed and underslept. Right? Underfed and yeah. underslept. Very yeah. stressed out. And uh, the coach was like, okay, like, you're coachable. I can see I can see this stuff here. So then I go back to the front office with, with my head coach, and he was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put you on a 10-day contract. We're going to see if you mesh with the team. We're going to see how much you want this. Now, mind you, he probably already knew he wanted me on the team at that point, yeah. but he wanted to see, like, for sure. just how, how far are you want to go This was his with gamble. He's this taking. was his gamble. So for those 10 days, man, I was a lunatic. I mean, we had 6 a.m. lifts. I'm there at 4 in the morning before mm-hmm. the actual lifting coach, which he did not like. Love you, Gary. <laughs> Gary did not like that. Gary wasn't a fan of me. He was like, he's like, and now I gotta show up for work on time. We, when we, every time you walked, and he's like, you do know it's at six, right? Like he's so <laughs> angry with me. I'm like, I know, uh, not not the biggest fan at the time, but yeah, um, yeah. Again, practices first there, last to leave. I'm trying to talk to every player, let like know how they are, and just I just wanted I wanted it real bad. And he saw that, and so he put me on the team. Uh, I had got a scholarship to finish out my schooling and. Uh, and that's you. You got oh. a scholarship to finish up your school. Man, if you think the sleep was good, man, I, the, the <laughs> day that I, where I'm like, oh, I don't know the school. Any Here's money. your three thousand. Oh yeah, man, I might have passed out before I even left <laughs> left the campus. I was yeah. so I was so tired, because yeah. you're just you're just you work so hard. That weight is off your shoulders. That you just you fall asleep. You fall oh like forever. my God! You get a slept for six days. I, I felt except like for I, you had to be at the gym. At had to be at the gym for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, that sleep that was probably the most rewarding sleep. I felt like I earned it. I felt like I earned the sleep. I felt like I earned the rest. Yeah. And uh, and then I got right right to work. Now I wait. Now when I wake up every day, I'm I feel like a superhero. I'm like yeah. I feel like a, I feel like I have accomplished something that I need to have pride in and understand yeah. that I just got to work harder because now I now I'm here. Yeah. I'm here now, and the, the the one downside to doing all this to get to the level is you're at this level now. So now you got to do twice as much to stay here and be better. Because now, now the the job is, and that's how sports works. You work so hard to get to this level mm-hmm. where more people are way better than you. Mm-hmm. You got to be better than them now. I'm like, now I got to find a way to be better than you guys oh, yeah. in order to get to the pros. It's that video game. It's like you finally passed the first level of Donkey Kong, and I go, oh, oh holy, what it, new hell is this? Right now, what's you know? next? <laughs> level two. Ah. <laughs> Dang, yeah, it's like that. So, um, so that was yeah, that was pretty much the whole picture towards Division One. 
um, and I know that we, I know that we took a, a long time to, to build this up. Right. I mean, that, that was it, it, I think that was your mountain story. You oh, know, I sure. mean, that was what you built your entire life. You showed that determination. You showed that willingness to do absolutely anything and, and breathe everything about your goal. Mm -hmm. Right. Very much. So you make D1. You're going to get a college a scholarship. And then now this gets to us to why we're here, why you're on the uh, cover of a food best restaurants issue. Yes. Sir. You know, the pandemic hits and and, oh, yeah. and, and all of that goes away. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very much. And you basically stare into a mirror at one point. <sighs> And you you look at yourself and you start talking to yourself and that becomes the start of a new dream, right? Yeah, pretty much. I'll tell you what, like we mentioned the loneliness of everything. Yeah. You I mean the deepest conversation I've ever had was with myself. I mean, I talk to myself more than I talk to anybody else, which yeah. might be alarming. But I but I really do. I, I tell people like all the things you see me do in the bathroom mirror, I'm I would do regardless if there's a the camera there or not I'm I am talking about these things because I'm genuinely curious about them and uh when I was when the pandemic had happened and I you know I'm in the house and I'm like well, what do I do I was like very adamant I'm like oh I still didn't know what social media worked at. I didn't sure. think I see somebody with two million followers I'm like I do I'll never be that guy right mm -hmm. so the only thing I wanted was my baseball story I didn't want it to go untold I did not want that to go under the rug because I'm like this is I went to way too much for me to be that one guy that's working at the at the store, and I'm like, you do know that I went D1 one. I didn't want to uh -huh. be that guy. So I'm like, you know what? I want to make a documentary. So uh -huh. I got a good buddy of mine named Jonah. Um, he's, he's out doing his thing right now. But Jonah and uh, my brother and myself, and we made this documentary called Dear Baseball. Uh, funny enough, I didn't know at the time Kobe Bryant made it <laughs> made a thing called Dear Basketball. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have vetted that more. But <laughs> I made Dear Baseball, and it was my first time with a piece of media that I'm like, how do I get this out to people? Mm -hmm. And you know, same thing with baseball. I was emailing 140 people a day, just that, just that documentary. Yeah, yeah. And and just to get people to look at it. And that was my first video. They went somewhat viral. I had like maybe a thousand followers and had 36,000 views. Mm -hmm. And then you know, people at LeBron James's team saw it and uninterrupted. They had me do something with them. And then that was that got me the confidence. I'm like, well, maybe I can do social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big deal. Oh, it's, yeah, it's undisputed. It's a big deal. Very much. I mean, they're and again, they're doing everything. And so I was, it, it was an accomplishment for me. And then Mile 44, I believe their sister company, if I'm not mistaken, but they helped me make like a shorter little one minute kind of kind of thing. And uh, it got it got kind of the juices flowing. And then my brother, obviously, he was very he's very in tune with social media. So you know, I found out he was doing it, and I was like, you know, let me let me try it out. So I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I'm not talented. I can't dance. I can't sing. I don't do makeup. I can't do all these things that people are, vi are very, very viral for. Or mm -hmm. when people would just start talking, like social commentary, just talking about whatever. But they're so profound in when the way they speak. I'm like, oh, I can't do yeah. that either. I was like, what do I do? Um, then after a while, I just used it as like a video diary. I would, I would talk in the bathroom about everything, about reactions to things or what I went through or how work was that day. And because right at that point you mm -hmm. are working kind of I'm low, working every job under the sun very faster. much. Tell us some of the places in Oceanside you were working. Um, I worked at Angelo's Burgers. I don't know if anyone. Knows oh yeah, I know Angelo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Louie, I love him. But uh, I worked at uh, Angelo's Burgers for a long time. It's kind of like a pseudo manager floor. I was I was doing a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of experiences there. I worked at a Chipotle. Uh, for a long time, I worked at Krispy Kreme for a while. I worked at construction, uh, doing a lot of the pro. Uh, there was a project out here in Carlsbad that was mainly that one. Also down here in San Diego, we would do work as well with construction. Um, I was working as a financial advisor for a little bit. Uh, I worked at the school at UC Riverside as the, like the financial advisor for a lot of the ethnic studies programs. Okay. Mm. Um, outside of that, I was doing uh, uh, chart analytics. For people who are like day trading, I would like follow chart analytics for them and things of that nature as well. Uh, I was a tutor, substitute teacher. I still kind of currently am somewhat a substitute teacher. Um, a couple of things. I, I wait. Say, say more. You're a substitute you, teacher. You, you, you're substitute still, teacher. You're yes. teaching. What do you teach? Um, well, actually, funny enough, I substitute teach at the at the church that I'm at here because they have school programs down there and it's okay. like the summer, so I have a little more time to do it there. Yeah. But prior to that, like you know, little little substitute teaching gigs here. What there, what like, age group are we talking about? Uh, for the church, at least, it's a wide range. It's between like, like middle school to high school. Okay, so they've seen your content. They have. But the minute I was there, they're like, "Why is the guy that does yeah, TikToks yeah, right. doing? To, why is he teaching me right now?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's def it definitely helped, though. I'll tell you what, because again, like, 
the coolest thing in the world right now for any kid is going viral. That's the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. So when they think you, when they think your teacher's cool, they listen to things. So I can teach them things and they'll actually listen to me because they think I'm a cool guy. So that helped me a lot with actually teaching the kids of like a lot of stuff. Plus a lot of my content, I do teach people things. So it's it wasn't too hard for, to catch that groove. I don't I don't want to make this about me, but I do want to relate fine, relate a story that makes sense. Um, I've been on Food Network for 13 years, mm-hmm. and my daughter could not give a damn. Um, she's 12. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like completely unimpressed. Um, I eventually get this DM from a kid um, a, a named Faze Rug, you know, and it says, hey, we are, we, are, we are working on this, you know, this video, and we want, you know, somebody who's a, a real food critic to come on in and be part of it. Hey, I look at these followers. There's 22 million followers. I go, this has got to be a fake. It's got to be a phishing thing. It's got to be a scam. I have no idea who this kid is, you know, and I, I show up at his house. And we do a series of videos. He's a really sweet, sweet guy. Um, and so we do a couple of videos. Holy, I, my daughter, my daughter came back from school that day and she's like, dad, you finally matter. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> At least for an afternoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You matter for about 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the biggest thing in my entire career. Oh, I was like, wow, that's great. That's great and really terrible and tragic and tragic. OK, anyways, back to this. So you are again. So you're starting to you're starting to make these these videos that you're doing um, are starting to really hit. I I love that it was your story that you had spent so much time on. You know that really hit emotionally and you know and, and it kind of struck a heart chord. For sure. You know, but now you're learning how to really tell stories too. Oh yeah. Did you know you were that good of a storyteller? I mean, did you know? No. no. Yeah. Did it develop over time, or was there kind of like a seed there from the beginning? You know what? Um, my dad is is the best storyteller in the world my dad has always told stories and and always set things up my dad always loves to set things as a scene and i didn't know i inherently loved just doing that i'm a big i'm a firm believer in experiences rather than like showing people so Mm -hmm. when i meet when i meet people who are quote unquote famous whatever i don't like taking pictures i just like experiencing it Mm -hmm. and telling people the story after i think it's fun and so uh, with a lot of these things, like, yeah, I, I just love telling the story and, and explaining how things are. And I didn't realize it was storytelling. I just thought that's how I like to explain things. So when um, there was a storytelling factor and I started to realize there was when people tell me, like, no, there's a storytelling factor. I I then started studying myself. I started studying, like, how am I doing these? Like, because I, do, I don't, I'm seeing it as I'm just talking. So I don't know how people yeah. are taking it. So I would, re, I would research my own videos and be like, well, what am I doing? I'm like, oh, I, okay, I set it up this way. I form it this way, I pivot it this way, and I end it here. And I was like, I didn't know I did that. So then that's when now if I do tell a story, I'm like, okay, I need to structure this. Jordan, mm. I'm seeing a real pattern here. I, I, I mean, you wanted to be a baseball player. You're walking on your damn toes. You know, that, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're. Well, yes, you're very much. There, is, there is a real overlap, and I get into this in the stories, that there is this, like, very um, clear through line of, like, the hardest working man in baseball, you know, at the time. And that that's confirmed from an actual MLB scout, you know? Um, and then taking that work ethic and that like, ma- well, let's be honest, maniacal oh, kind of sure. work ethic sure. to into, into social media. And like, you know, you told me you're posting five, seven oh, videos yeah. a day, mm-hmm. you know, but which I is like just feeding the algorithm, which the algorithm loves. For sure. And so there's a real like kind of method along with this madness, I'm not gonna say to the madness, but there's madness. Of course. And now there's a method, which is like, yo, I'm just I'm just hungry. I'm just doing this oh, now. Very much, very much. And I think you really did say it best here, Mateo. It's that it's, um, it scratches your competitive itch that you missed with baseball. Cause, mm-hmm. when, Cause again, with every athlete, and I'll tell you this right now, and you can ask any athlete that has played and it might be fresh off of the game or hasn't played in a while, you lose your sense of self, your own personality. You lose it. Your when you identity. Stop playing, your identity yeah. when you stop playing a sport. You have been known to be a cog in a machine that can be replaced at any time. And if you are not mm-hmm. performing, you will be replaced. And that's every day. I mean, that's social media. That's social media in a nutshell. If you're if you're not doing your work, you will be replaced. And so, in in sports, it's a lit. It's a bit more drastic because it can it can end by the day, by the play, by the minute. One play you mess up on, you won't see the mm-hmm. field for another three weeks. So you always have to feel like you're on your toes to be perfect on things. And in a way, that that competitiveness, as much as it is, in a way, like, not – it's not fun in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. But by the time you're out of it, you kind of miss that. 
Yep. And so with social media. I got a game that I'm facing, and there's a way to play it. I got a game I'm facing. There's a way to play it. I have peers. And you can see the rewards. see it. Like every day. Like I'm. Every single day. View counts. Follower counts. Very much. And then, and that's the thing is that there's there's that healthy balance. You got to figure out too where it's um, the audience. Like we talk about it. The most important thing that I've realized was the audience. And people had asked me, it's actually very recently someone asked me, it might have been Doug, I'm not sure, but they asked like, when did you, it was Tony, I'm sorry. This is, uh, he asked me, when did you realize like, oh, people know who I am and watch my videos? And now, I'm, and it's a great question because during the pandemic, you're not outside. Mm, right. You don't go outside, you don't talk to people. You are, for me, it was work where I'm wearing a mask or I'm very like, I'm very structured in what I'm doing and my coworkers, they know me and we all don't do social media. And I go home and I do that every day. I'll go to a movie late at night where no one's there anyway because I like doing that. That's all. It's those are the only three things I'll do. And I was happy with that. So the only time I actually went out in public was when I went to the fair, the San Diego Fair, which I, another job I had. God, um, I love the fair. When I worked as an ambassador at San Diego Fair. Whole stuff there. But anyway, yeah. uh, when I went to the fair just on my own, I was like, you know, I'm going to go. I want to enjoy it take somebody with take a family member with me and I went and I thought it was gonna be cool like there's a couple of food places there thought it'd be fun thought my mom would enjoy it when we got there like there was a family immediately when I walked into family wanted to take a picture I was like oh sure took that one picture and then a line formed behind this family no way. This person after person after person after person and I'm like what then I realized I said oh my goodness all of these numbers are people like the minute I'm like oh mm-hmm. my because you don't it doesn't mm-hmm. connect until you see it. and I'm like wow so now you're like, okay, I now uh, I'm fully locked in on what this is and the responsibility of it, because right. these are these are human just like me yeah. went through these same experiences. They're watching me every day and connecting. And they're connecting we're all with desperate me to day. connect in that moment too. very much. So because of that, I'm like, okay, I now I'm starting to understand what's going on. So when I would then when I started making the videos, I was really hyper aware. I'm like, you know what, these people are just like me. They're, they're just like me or again they're human beings going through stuff just like all of us mm-hmm. so because of that like when I do explain things I want to make sure I'm explaining them as best as I can give them something that they can maybe learn from or take away from or give them a laugh if I can it's now it now no longer is I want to feed the algorithm and now it's I want to give somebody something they can really enjoy right and right. when You're you think, have that mindset you humanize those likes very much they, they all of a sudden became mm. real human beings that see you at the fair and this means something in their life to take a picture with you because they're like god I love that man's story a hundred percent and I'll tell you what you don't because you're in that you're in that competitive mindset even as an athlete, you never think to yourself, I'm a big deal. You never think to yourself, I'm, I'm this person. I never think that. Even to this day, I don't feel that way. But if somebody sees you and they freak out and they want to take a picture with you, 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 you have, have to, to give that. them that yeah. experience. Mm-hmm. You need to. Because the first celebrity I ever met disappointed me badly. Around my mom, I was a kid, I was excited. And it was an awful experience, and I'll never forget it. And I don't ever want to be the person to give somebody that experience. Mm-hmm. So even if I don't think I'm a big deal, in this circumstance, if you're freaking out, I will be the big deal today, and let me make sure I give you the best experience possible. Mm-hmm. So that having those mindsets, that's what drives you to keep you going. Does that ever get tiring? Because, you know, you got upwards of 30 mil followers now. Yes. Um, I'm, I imagine it. The, you get recognized fairly often, yes, right? Sir. And, like, that would get draining after a time of like, actually, I just need to run an errand today. You know, <laughs> Actually, I, I do just want to have lunch with mom. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I, this sounds so either cliche or maybe people are going to be like, well, hit, hit us with the enough. cliche, bro. But, um, but no, no, because again, like kind of like we just talked about, yeah. I just really don't see myself that way. So when anybody freaks out when I'm just around, it genuinely brings me joy <laughs> that somebody cares about me enough to freak out like this so mm-hmm. every time it doesn't matter i'll be i'll sit I'll, and i have done it for hours i'll just whoever comes up let's take because when we went to a, a festival recently a dreamville festival very recently it was a my birthday just passed and i wanted to go and i wanted to just have my family and friends enjoy and experience with me yeah you know because we haven't done that for years i said let's go to the festival and just yeah. enjoy ourselves I really didn't, again, same thing, didn't understand the magnitude. I got there and it was like every five steps was picture or uh, just a ta- talk, maybe an autograph or whatever, but it was every, mi- so much so I told my family, like, go and get your food, leave me here, because mm-hmm. gonna, we're gonna be here all day. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you don't get tired of it, you love it, it's so great. Mm. It's just like, you feel like, a, in a way, you feel like I could do this all day. Well, there, one thing that actually came up in, in the reporting this profile of you 
is you know talking to people who know you it's this seems to be genuine and then as a reporter i come to this with skepticism like sure, is this just course. a package that you're trying to sell as like uh you know this this internet celebrity of like oh this is how i am but it kind of came across and came across and came across that jordan is like this just very genuine and had a guy and like then you hang out with him and you're like oh i th- i think he's kind of just a really genuine kind of guy yeah. yeah. Well, and that's I, I mean, that's what, that's the kind of stuff that lasts, you know, I mean, it, when, when you, you're, you're yourself, you're the same person that you, that you see on on the media, whatever media it is. I, I usually I, I swear I'm not making this about me. I, but no, there's, please, some, go ahead. there's I mean, something guys. interesting, though, about the people that kind of broke out or, or made it made it in media or were media presence during the pandemic. And the reason why I say this is this. I'm a Z lister on Food Network, right? I mean, and I no, and I mean that and I'm not trying to be ex- extraordinarily humble. You know, like I would go to the grocery store and, and like I occasionally in a grocery store, I would get recognized and people would be like, oh, you're the guy. You're the, you're the guy from the thing, you know? And so during the when the pandemic hit, we kept on filming from our house. Mm-hmm. I, the first Padres game, the first time we ever really went out of a house into a uh, crowded, you know, a scene oh, was yeah. the first Padre game. They came back. A, we kind of cried because that was it was just kind of an emotional like coming back of human beings. For sure. You know, we saw the wave going. We was like, like, oh my god, <laughs> oh yeah, we're back. Um, but I walk down the the aisle, and I go, I hear Troy, Troy the boy, Troy, Troy, and there my an entire section. Yeah. Lit up like you're Troy Johnson. But I was like, holy shit! <laughs> I'm like, and I just realized I'm like, oh, you guys have been watching, doing nothing but watching TV, watching content, and and, yeah. can, and, and it's got to be a different because there's a different kind of connection. I think that your story it matters in your story because you were, we were all so desperate for connection, and with the ones that we connected with really connected. Well, especially with us. If there's something genuine to it, right? And with your content, right? And you know. I talk about this in the story, yeah. which you can read on San Diego Magazine dot com. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> once this podcast drops, but um, uh, you know, with your content, it's it, it is kind of like a breath of fresh air. A mm-hmm. lot of times, right, in people's feeds mm-hmm. on your for you page, it's you're you're dealing with a lot of like packaged, overproduced Very content, and then here comes Jordan talking to you like like a friend in the mirror in, in my bathroom w- in like <laughs> one take, you know, in one take, yes. you know, like you have you have people that have to make entire recipes right yeah. for a day and then mm-hmm. edit that together for a day and like that's their content production schedule mm-hmm. whereas jordan is very repeatable and can just like get in the mirror and yeah. be like i can i can shoot three of these in a day if i want I can, or however many you want yeah. right yeah. and like there's that along with that genuineness then you have this recipe then it starts to make sense mm-hmm. how do you go from uh playing baseball to ten thousand followers a million followers oh. in a year you know, and now where we're at with, you know, yeah, every time I look at your page, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you know, I go to press and I'm like, he's got upwards of 25 million followers on these platforms. And now mm-hmm. it's like 30. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's just exponential because of this like very special recipe. Right. Yes, of sir. genuineness and repeatability. Is that it, does yeah. that resonate? Yeah. And, uh, and I'll tell you what. And the one thing I'll say is I respect very much that you had said, Mateo, and I appreciate that is I respect I respect the skepticism of it. I respect the like, mm, is this person who they really say? Because you always think that. You always do. Like, I would. I just had this conversation last night um, with a buddy of mine. We're talking for hours, and it was because uh, we had met through the social media space. He does social media as well, so do yeah. I. And we talked, and we knew each other very, you know, very surface level. But I think he was very curious about how I am as a human being and what yeah. my life is like. Because again, what they see rather than what sure. they know. Are you AI? Am I? Yeah, exactly. And I, and, I, and I tell him that because of, we talk about it more somewhat the, the semi, the experiences that I went through, again, had mentally affected me so much. Sure. That all you see, you feel numb to these things very much. Not numb in the sense like you don't feel it. I love, it. I do feel it. But it's like, a, it's like, Say we go to an event, right? And I'm one of these big people that I, I'm supposed to go. Mm-hmm. And you see these other creators and these other people, and everyone's either freaking out or they're they're enjoying their fame of things. Yeah. You literally stand there and you're like, like, uh, well, like how how come I'm here? Like, mm-hmm. you feel like an imposter. You don't feel like the like I, in my head. I'm like, how am I supposed to act with this? Mm-hmm. And so, I genuinely like being in the house. I love conversations like this. When we had breakfast, I I love that. I love conversation. Yeah, yeah. I do. And I, 
it's just something I enjoy very much. All the stuff that can come through, I'm a firm believer, and it can all go away tomorrow. Absolutely. It really can. Yeah. So there's no, it can all come away, to, go away tomorrow. And without the fan base, I just, I don't exist. This whole thing doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So who am I? To think that I am better than anybody else when I am literally a I'm a, I'm a watcher just like you are. Yeah. So there's no point of me thinking that. Oh, I, if anything, like I said, you watch my videos. You're my boss. How I see it, I see yep. it as you're my boss. So like and, our uh, audience at San Diego Mag is our boss. Is we, your boss? We, we talk about it all the time. It's like, what do they want? I'm sure we're going to give them some things that I'd like for you to hear. This story <laughs> about this person. Of course. You know, or this story that okay, you may not know that you want this story, but we found this really cool story about a mom and pop down over here that I think you should hear. But Absolutely. other than that, you tell me what you want, and we'll give it to you. And and that you said it perfectly, and that's what we talked about. Where it's like I. The way I see it, I I'm humbling myself to you guys. You guys created this, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I, I will not think to myself, I, I just can't. And uh, it, again, it's really hard to come off because in this space, in the life we're living, that's just not, you well, don't believe that. You're I like, think there's that's no way. why there is such a um, kind of breath of fresh air feeling to you know, your content for a lot of people mm -hmm. um, is that there is, I think that can resonate through the screen mm -hmm. of people who kind of exude that that influencer ego kind of they lead with that it fills the screen in their content very much and and you know yours maybe doesn't in a lot of ways no and and, uh, and we kind of all said this and, and I'll keep it real brief on this one but like um in regards to this I mean it, people always ask there's always a question like you know how far do you want to take this how big does this go all these things and you know at some point you know if it does if it scales high enough right you know, might be in a different bathroom. Might be out the bathroom. Might be, in a, <laughs> might be in a studio. You don't know. You never know, right? Might be. It say we make it a, yep. into a movie or whatever the case, right? At some point, that traditional media say you know we're lucky enough to get into the traditional media space and we're on a show or whatever the case. Excuse me, you're on the cover of San Diego Magazine. You there we go. Made it. He it. hasn't seen Look, it yet. He's I, gonna I, see it soon. It. Oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm hoping it. it's gonna. It's, it should be here. I'll send a text and find out if it's oh, here. Oh, when yeah. I tell you the pictures we took, I was like, this is. Cool. You, you look, <laughs> you you look dapper, sir. You look very good. Thank you. When I tell you, I, I'm so bad at keeping secrets, clearly, because I show <laughs> I'm so bad at keeping secrets. This is the one I'm like, I had this to hold my tongue with. why we picked you for the cover, because you're bad at keeping I'm secrets. I'm so yeah, yeah. bad at it. It's kind of your thing. It's kind of your thing that I don't keep secrets. No, so. well, that's the thing. I'm so bad at it that I knew this was happening, and my parents are like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, you, you'll find out. Oh, wait. You haven't told mom and dad? So they, they, they are familiar with what's going on. I haven't told them, like, you know, the extent or, like, the front cover. I just told them it was, like, Did, San Diego Magazine. They don't know you're on the cover. Not yet. Oh, that is no. really, really excited to, fun. I'm Mom, excited to show. Dad, <laughs> I think you already know this, <laughs> but I think he's done okay. <laughs> I know San right. Diego Magazine cover is going to cement that, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, not the, the but this is your first cover. This, this is your first, cover. first ever cover. And again, and like we talk about, at some point, you know, if we're out the bathroom and we're doing whatever the case we're doing, uh, I know. You know, more of that's going to happen. More of that's where it's going to be like, is he really this guy? Or is this a, is this act or whatever? And uh, and I'm always willing to have that conversation and sit down with somebody and let them know, hey, I I really am. Who I'm saying I am. And yeah. if I ever veer off of that, the people that I'm with will make sure that 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 gets checked. It has to. You have to have people like that in your life, or else it it, 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 it veers off into something you don't want to be. Well, and this is the kind of kind of person that, and the kind of pe person with the kind of experience that you've had. I think that is the, are the best people to have fame happened to them, you know, or, or celebrity happened to them, or you know, a large following happened to them, somebody that, you know, has seen, you've slept in the back of your car, Oh, you yeah, know, I mean, you, you've you been humbled in, in nine different ways, a hundred different ways, maybe you've been told no at every turn of your dream, yes. you know, and if for seven years, you stayed at it doggedly, mm -hmm. you know, and they have an analyst mind too, by the way, I mean, obviously oh. you're doing financial analysts, but I mean, the fact that you analyze how you become a professional athlete by walking your tiptoes, <laughs> and then you, you know, you analyze how you're going to be able to feed this algorithm, how you're going to be able to, you know, to take game a machine yes. you know i mean you you be able to you i have a feeling that you could take a carcass and break it down to its component parts that make it up and that that's a really macabre way of saying that yeah that was dark <laughs> that was that yeah, was i was, that was thinking the same thing yeah. i was, like, I, <laughs> that was, I was just waiting for him to say it i'm like it's actually we'll talk about the second time he's done that uh, today yeah. too strangely. we'll talk about yeah. these carcasses later um <laughs> i mean but but I, that that kind of uh, just there's a humbleness that, that just transfers and an intellect through. and an intellect you yeah. know you got to be smart to be funny Right, mm -hmm. and the Absolutely. content is funny, and it's funny you you I I as you were talking, I kind of pieced together something that I hadn't previously in our conversations and in my reporting, mm -hmm. that like there is this real combination of of mom's uh, sense of humor yes. and dad storytelling, 
Very much. That kind of get pieced Oh, your mom's together. funny. Oh, my mom is hilarious. She is so <laughs> funny. My mom, I've uh, no matter what circumstance our family has been through, my mom has always had a joke to tell or to break the, she breaks the tension just so naturally and so mm-hmm. funny and so tastefully. And that is something that cannot be taught. She has it that I, I can only, again, I was raised with her, so there's certain things that I can do, but my mom is the funniest person I know for sure. Yeah, in my reporting, like, mom sounded like the in- most interesting person to talk to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, mom's coming up on the next. Yeah, cover yeah. Can you imagine? I, I promise you this. <laughs> yeah, my mom on here. I would not be mentioned once. You guys would be laughing about <laughs> totally a billion other things. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, you can teach it because you obviously got a little bit of the osmosis through it, you know. I mean, whether yeah, I mean, sure, it takes a different form. You oh, know? for sure. I mean, and you're right. It's it's funny you mentioned it, and it's it was a realization I had made. I mean, not too long ago was I was like I didn't realize, like the things that annoyed me as a kid about my dad with the lectures and everything else, or maybe a, <laughs> as a kid I didn't understand like why is mom always telling a joke? Like I didn't realize, like that's their dynamic that mm-hmm. makes them work, and that's something that my brother and I are both products of. My brother is so smart and so funny and the thing is my brother's vernacular he he can talk a mile a minute and say the most you know intellectual words i don't even know what they mean mm-hmm. and still land a joke that i mean you have to have a certain type of intellect to laugh right. at right and i'm like i don't know how he does it so yeah. it's, just, it's, it's like a flyby a joke that if only a few people get for sure to where like he'll land and i'm like yes cool it would go over my head so i'm like all right where's the joke five minutes like, later yeah, you're and like, like oh that was so funny yeah so it's, that's <laughs> So okay, so now we we should probably talk about food since this is a food podcast. Of course, um, the I mean this kind of we've talked about you know what, what makes you you know who you are and, and the process that, that of how you got there mm-hmm. and, you know and family and San Diego roots. But how does um, w- a first question? Um, how much does Domino's hate you? Um, probably very. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably not a big fan of me. <laughs> so, I mean, to give everybody kind of, I mean, you you basically started doing fast food hacks. Yeah. I mean, you know, and kind of, you know, this, tell us how that started because I understand it was like a college thing and then how it kind of evolved on your own brand. Of course. Um, uh, the Fast Food Secrets Club itself had started when, again, I was uh, in school still and I was working, again, odd jobs. Uh, and my a couple of friends of mine also worked odd jobs. And... Um, especially food places with every food place and anybody who works at food place will tell you like there's always a workaround there's always uh, a absolutely. discount there's always a thing you know so uh, again because again times are tough money's tight and we, we all like our versions of food that we worked at yeah. we're like hey like let's start a little group chat here or we'll meet up a little bit when we hang out and we'll be like hey like here's a little thing that you can do to save a little money here on this place mm-hmm. or this place whatever and we call it the fast food secrets club you know we'd have little meetings about it and it's so, so it was some fun and you know, I, it was something that was like a fun little college memory, left it alone, whatever the case. And then as I'm making videos, I started noticing, like, there were some certain things that I kind of just didn't naturally. I didn't realize people didn't do, like, you know, promo codes or whatever. I was like, do they not know these little things here? You, so know, I was you, like, you know you can pay half of what you're paying for the pizza. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let me, you know, let me just, like, hey, we started a fast food secret club. You know, if you use this code, it still it probably should still work. And then I'll be like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, it still works until they know about it, which mm-hmm. not And I was like, it might not work after this, but use it while it works. And the, it just caught a lot of fun because people Fire. love the idea of not paying full price for stuff and I don't know why I was like whoa people like that <laughs> <laughs> I thought we all like paying full it price for stuff it is a base stuff. human instinct oh my gosh you know what I mean I was like whoa so um, we just continued it I was like oh this is fun like oh try this little hack here or try this little thing here then when there's things that I knew of in my area I was like okay cool I know this is my area I would like go and like go on the website and test this little promo code and like other regions of the United States to make sure it works out then I'll tell people it's like maybe it might work hopefully yeah. it works for you but uh, yeah I try to vet it as much as I can I'd share it with people and then that then bled into uh, I mean recipes little secret recipes yeah. and stuff where I'm like oh like Cool. If this is too pricey here, you can make it at home for way cheaper. I saw you make the Dr. Way. Pepper brownies, which and they, then you had a religious experience. I, I could see it. I had the whole cake you're, in the morning. Yeah, your, your soul whole left your body. So, soul back. left the body. I'm telling you, the the things that we've done, even even something as, as silly as I'm like fast food related, but even something as silly as like a as the apple donut. Like mm-hmm. actually having the apple and surrounding it with some little dough mm-hmm. and then making it making a donut stuff like that. Like again, I I'm a late night snacker. Mm-hmm. You know, I will mm-hmm. I will eat an entire cake, which I've done before. <laughs> Which we've seen, <laughs> or the brownies. I ate all the brownies. Uh, my grandfather didn't believe that. Where he was like, uh, "What was it? It was, it was a Tostino's pizza rolls, where you <laughs> you you uh, pretty much drench them in like you know garlic butter and something else, yeah, and then, like whatever." And, and oh eat yeah. Them. And I ate all of them. And he was, and he comes to my house one day. And he's like, "All right, where is this food that you're hiding? There's no way you're eating 
all of this food. Yeah. I was like, I ate all of it. it like that was just for camera. No, no, I really did. I'm like, I'm like, I can only this video can only be a minute thirty seconds. Let me pause it, eat this, and then I'll be like, hey, this is great. But it does get eaten. It has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So then, so did you ever get? I mean, like, did McDonald's call you, or did, did Domino's call you? Did, did, have you gotten calls from companies that are like, will you please stop doing these videos, sir? You know what? Um, the rare ones were like. Texas Roadhouse. I remember that one specifically, uh, which was again weird. I remember uh-huh. that one. I remember, ah, uh, gosh, who was it? I know Olive Garden felt a type of way, uh, which was which interesting. is interesting because. But do they? Because <laughs> okay, well, that, thirty that, million people are now thinking about Olive. That's Garden, my question though, because again, with Texas Roadhouse, it was uh, holiday stuff where it was like, hey, you can sign up on a short list and get like a whole tray of uncooked rolls. That you take home and you can cook yourself so they're fresh, mm-hmm. and and you buy them there. So I was like, hey, I'm just gonna let everybody know you could do that. And then they like panicked, contacted. They're like, hey, like you know, you would consider taking this down because you know. I, and I'm like, why? I'm like, it's taking you money. Keep up? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. I was assuming like so it was confusing me. Or even Olive Garden when I talked about the uh, <laughs> the cheese graters. Mm-hmm. Um, half of the people at Olive Garden were really like. Thank you. That was awesome. The other half were like, you ruined my life. And I'm like, all right, okay. Wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, I mean, it is, it's a lot of people. You know, if you got 30 million followers, it's a lot of people who are like, maybe I will go to Olive Garden and, and buy try an $8 yeah. cheese. Well, imagine garden. you're at a nice little garden party. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> over the hill <laughs> comes Braveheart. <laughs> Just you know, a bunch of people. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah, it is a... It, it, there's some responsibility involved, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, how much of that do you feel? I mean, honestly, these are mega corps. Of course, their problems are their problems. At the very end. much, very much. <laughs> All right, fantastic. All right, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with we, that. We really quickly. What was it, what? What is the um, Olive Garden one? Um, the, I had shared the, uh, the Fettuccine Alfredo recipe. I think the spaghetti recipe, and then obviously uh-huh. the, the the cheese grater was a thing as well. There's but a there's a cheese grater, that, oh, you know, oh, that I'm they bring sorry. to the I'm, table. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll let you. Talk. Yeah, please. I guess uh, apparently with Olive Garden, uh, I didn't know this was like a thing because every Olive Garden employee says it's like they will sell you know anything off the wall if you want it. Yeah. Pretty much. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then I had seen from this other young lady who I'm so sorry because I'm forgetting the name at the moment, but yeah. she had tried it out first. She was like, I didn't know this was a thing. And I was like, cool. I saw her do it. So I'm like, okay, well, she did it. So I'm going to go try it. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go try this, guys. Woke up at like 6 that morning, went to the only Olive Garden I know of, waited till they opened, walked in. And I was like, hey, like, can I get a cheese grater? <laughs> and for some reason, they're like, yeah, like you buy a cheese grater. Gives me a brand new cheese grater, like fresh in the box. Gives me a a, a tray of uh, of cheese, uh-huh. a block cheese that, yeah. you, that you can try with it. Sure, try the product. Sold it to me. Test drive it. Yeah. yeah, test drive it out. I went home. I d- told people, I'm like, this actually happened. This was, here's the cheese they gave me, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Didn't think much of it. I thought, like, okay, cool, go try it if you want. And it, it, it went white hot. People were demanding to go to a Olive Garden. Olive Garden have no more cheese graters Th- left. Dude, it or was, cheese. It was, <laughs> dude, it was to a point where people were, were making videos being like the Olive Garden, they're out of cheese graters. They still need some for their work. So, no, but it, it was interesting. Uh, the cheese grater company that made the cheese graters had contacted us being like, hey, thanks for this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. right. Like, for sure. You're, um, like, you're so like, like you're like so. When we talk about points on my deal, right? Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. What's on my deal? Exactly. It's like um, a diamond encrusted oh, cheese grater oh, pendant. Yes, like something. it was like something. something I would something. Yeah. love that. But yeah, no, it was um, yeah. When stuff like that happens, you're right. Like you again. That's when you realize the weight of sometimes like because again, I still yeah. see it as like oh, it's like a fun little thing. Yeah. It is now ballooned up to maybe sometimes aren't things aren't just like fun little things. They could really have intense effects when you say like oh, try this out. For sure. So, so maybe. So again, there's times when people might be like, "Try this out," and they are either maybe like joking around, or maybe they like they don't really know if it's a real thing, but it tried to work for them one time. But now you have thousands of people going, trying yeah. it, not working. Now it's interrupting the people working there, making yeah. their lives harder. So let me ask you this: people. in terms of like food, still yeah, a cornerstone course. of your content, but there's a little bit more happening now. Yes, yeah. there's a little bit more in terms of like commentary. What's next? Like, Coming soon. Or, or or just like you know social commentary of like 
you right. know, the Gen Z. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that looking was, older. Was that like, went fire. Uh-huh. Got you hooked up with Method Man. Got you hooked up with Kevin Hart. Yeah, at least much. for that mm-hmm. one video in DC, right? Yes, 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 yes. And by the way, shout out to both of them. I know Method Man was on the podcast with you know, Carmelo and, and Mero, and he, and he was said none but great things. So, I mean, I want to make sure I do my due diligence. Method Man is a fantastic person, mm-hmm. and he's super down. Do you, I, and he I, was actually, I mean, he's funny. He's hilarious. He's, he's hilarious. Uh, we did the we did the thing with Kevin Hart because again, food related, right? Um, uh, we saw, you know, just being fully honest, I saw Keith Lee and Kevin Hart did something, you know, with Hart House, his new restaurant. Yeah, mm-hmm. in, in L.A., right? In L.A. And yeah. I was like, why didn't he? Have, I know he had a restaurant, so I reached out to Hart House. I'm like, hey, like, I'd love to come try it out. Yeah. So they had a new location at the time, and I went and tried it out, and it was great. We got acquainted with some of their people, and then way later down the road, they're like, hey, like, would you be down to do something with Kevin? I was like, sure, like, that's fine. As much as I Again, much celebrities are great. You gotta like we talk about with our audience. It has to make sense, right? You know, it has yeah. to make sense and somewhat still. How do I make this video feel as relatable as I can with Kevin Hart next to me? Like that's gonna be that's a challenge, <laughs> right? Because of course he's a megastar. They're all megastars, and, sure. they, and you want to give them that respect as well. So, uh, we did the video with Kevin at first. It went great. Yeah. They sold their milkshake. It was awesome. It was a tasty milkshake as well. Mm-hmm. And then Method Man was because after the Kevin Hart thing, I, I won't drone too much, but after the Kevin Hart thing, I watched Soul Plane for the first time in its full entirety. I didn't see it. It, it was like a rite as of, one does, right? You know, I, I, yeah. <laughs> in my off day, no, it was. It's like a rite of passage. Of course, in my family to watch Soul Plane, I just never did. So I, I watched Soul Plane. I didn't know Method Man was in it, and I saw how, the way he acted, and I was like, whoa, like whoa, he's, he's really got- funny. Mm-hmm. He can be. His delivery was great, and I'm like, I have a great idea that would take this kind of delivery at myself and yep. people think we look similar anyway. People are dogging on how I look old. Like I got an idea. <laughs> so I messaged him that day. I on uh, It was a cold message. We don't even follow each other. I messaged him the day and said, hey, I got a great idea. It would take like 10 minutes of your time. Yep. Let me know if you're down. I went over to Roscoe's to eat some food. I got in my car oh, and he had hit me. Man of taste. Roscoe's, by okay. the way, of course. Um, he hit me back. He was like, yeah, I'm down. What is it? Uh-huh. So we planned it for our, like the day before the Super Bowl. That was just an, un- that was an unfortunate coincidence, but it was super busy getting over there. Yeah. Went the day before the Super Bowl, got over to the hotel room. I told him what the idea was. I'm like, I got I got some clothes for you to match with me with. Mm-hmm. Just stay with me. I need your reading glasses on. Wear these clothes. I'm like, I want you to just, you know, be yourself. Yep. I'm like, the one thing, the one joke I need you to say for me is when I'm like, you know, we are wearing the same colors. I want you to be like, oh, yours is more of an almond brown. Mine's more of a brunette brown. You know, but I need you to, I need you <laughs> to land that. He owns it, though. And he, he owned, owned it. it. He He's owned like, it. Plus, it was, yeah, it like, this so, is casual. Like, I wear casual. No, it was, and I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you what. You get so excited that the joke landed in the video. You had to focus on finishing the video. You're like, oh, that was so great. Thank you. <laughs> now you got to finish it out. From but, Kevin Hart. Right. Exa- or, you know, this is Method Man, but yeah, Kevin Hart oh, too, man. Right. Sorry. No, that, no, of course. Man, and no, yeah. But mind you, same with Kevin, though, because like from Method Man, that video happened, and we filmed it in like, again, it took 10 minutes. I'm leaving his, his hotel room, and he was like, cool, when's, that, when's this going to be live? I'm like, in about two minutes. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Posted it. It went, again, white hot overnight. People were demanding a second one. Um, and then Kevin and myself did our second video. Or no, I'm sorry. Then Method Man and myself did our second video. Yeah. That was uh, out in L.A. Uh, he got. He now knew what the deal was. So he was a little more inclined. I said, now I want I want you to open the video. It's, normally I would yeah. do it and I'll come in. Same thing. I'm like, only this time instead of the color, I want you to really focus on the material of the turtleneck. Because mm-hmm. these are just, I think it's so funny to me yeah. to do that. Because it's so inane. It's, it's great. It's so inane. But again, like I'm like, I just need you to be like, I know guys like the way that I read the videos more than Jordan. But he started adding his own spin. He's like, you know, I'm more suave, I'm more debonair than Jordan. I'm like, oh, yes, there you go. Like, mm-hmm. lean into it. And he was just perfect with it. And then Kevin, he's Kevin. So it was super easy. The second time we did something with Kevin, he knew what the deal was. We had a little more time together. And I was like, you just riff. And Kevin is yeah. so good. And again, I and I say this with full honesty because if he wasn't, I'd be honest. He is so good at if he wants to be the funniest guy in the room, he can just turn it on, and he's the funniest guy in the room. Yeah. No one can touch him, and that's what happened there. Like he was just so good at playing off of what we were doing. Yeah, nailed it. First take, got out of there. But it that line, perfect. let's talk about it because this is worth saying. Of course, like that line that you that you deliver together. It's this very traditional joke. Oh, very that, much. that you wrote. You yes. know, it just got that the punchline that. Uh, Disappointed librarian, right? Yes, a disappointed librarian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's like a that's a you know, Jordan dresses like a disappointed librarian. Librarian, yeah, like, you know, uh, that, <laughs> so good. That, it, that you know, that's what his mom says, and Thank then you, Kevin yes. comes in and says it. You know, it, but it lands, man. I mean, it's a, it's a funny joke that you you wrote that, correct? I did. I was in the hotel room most of the night before, actually, because I already had the idea what we were going to do way before. But then I was like, no, I'm like, this is 
there's something that could be set up here way mm-hmm. more perfect. And uh, and so that took me like most. I didn't go to bed until probably four or five that morning because I was trying to make it sure. Like as simple as it does sound, the setup and delivery of it, I want it to be as perfect as it can be. Uh-huh. So when I had it, and I know with Kevin, he's a busy guy. He is one of the most sure. famous comedians in the, yeah. on the earth. So I know I don't have a million takes with him. I know I don't have a million different jokes. So I'm like, when he comes in, I, we got to get this done in one take. I need him to kind of hit the yep. mark, and we got to get him out of here. And yep. so when we did it, 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 again, it landed perfectly. But yeah, that was I did it the night before. It's a word disappointed. That, that's, that, that's it. It's a word disappointed. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could be any other descriptor, and it wouldn't have been as funny. You know, but you, no, just very see, much. you, you see very somebody much. like, a, as a librarian, you picture them, and then all of a sudden, they're like, just vaguely disappointed. Not mad, not angry. No, of course. Just, just, uh, just And then what disappointed about what? Exactly. Because like, exactly. he's a librarian. It could be a million things. <laughs> librarians see so many things from so many people. There's always so many reasons to of be course. disappointed. Of course, and then Kevin set it up where he was like, uh, like uh, John Grisham, huh? <laughs> no, very, no, very much. Well, Kevin had set it up where he's like, because they always look sad, and I'm like, right. I'm like, every day is, is just breakfast and disappointment. He's like, yeah, like it, it was just a good bouncing back and forth. So it was so much fun. It was great. <laughs> I love that. Do you, what else? You got any questions? Well, you know, I want. I mean, I think we can wrap this up, man. I just, I curious, like, what it means to you to be doing your first cover shoot, be on the cover of a magazine. Um, and we're setting you, know, you up here. Yeah, we're setting it, you yeah. up. I you mean, can say hoping. it's terrible, and, sure. it, and it's kind of it is. You, you oh. can be like, "This <laughs> means nothing to me." Did you know oh I have God. thirty million followers? <laughs> oh, no. like, I'm gonna go make a video that changes the course of American consumerism. Oh, no. There will be no cheese graters <laughs> left in Olive Garden. In my, <laughs> yeah, like, under my room. But, but yeah, no, your cheese. magazine covers this cool. Guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I, well, I they, honestly. What they, is a magazine, by the way? I'm Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> Magazines mean a lot in my world. I'll tell you what. I, I, I still, I actually, I still read some of the newspaper, which people don't believe. It's in the car. Um, but to answer your question, what does it mean to me? It, it, this is like the best thing, the most full circle thing ever for me. It is a gigantic honor because, again, growing up in San Diego, I've seen you guys' covers. I've seen San Diego Magazine. And we saw the initial email I got. I thought it was a scam at first. I'm like, there's no way they're hitting us up. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was so I was so excited. And by the time we got done with the cover shoot, by the time we started kind of seeing what this would look like, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like you don't want to jinx it. You don't want to spook it. You're like, I just really hope this actually comes out. Like it's it looks good. Well, Shout out to our our editor um, Amelia who styled you, I believe. Thank That's you, you did, Amelia right? styled um, Matt Furman's shot. Um, and you know the idea was like people see you in your bathroom. Your yes. content is very casual, so we mm-hmm. kind of dress you up to the nines, put you in this fancy, fancy food restaurant, so to speak, and, and, and in an environment and, and, that you—I mean, not that you wouldn't be there, but an environment that people don't see you in. Oh, of yeah, we don't get to see, we don't get to see you dressed up very often, right? No, we don't get not to at see all. you this like is, in these kind of yeah, kind of fancy spots. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it came out well. I'm excited for you to see it here very soon. No, like I guess it was it was perfect. I'm happy. I can't wait because again, the, like well, like I said in the TED talk before, even with the first pitch um, that we did at the, at the White Sox Stadium was like nobody can take that away from you that experience we talk about no one can come in and take that experience that i had away from me i can tell my kids i can tell my grandkids hey i did this and this happened and boom for the san diego magazine i can now get a cover and i could be like this this is here this This is is real real. this is real and i I did like the day you walked out of your car and you didn't know if you were in a dream or if not you know i still i'm not kidding you this is gonna sound so silly again and more cliche but i to this day sometimes some things will happen i'm like maybe i'm just asleep still maybe this is just a really long dream Mm -hmm. and i wake back up in my uh, dude there's times i think that way and i'm like i you know because it's all this doesn't even seem real sometimes it's all happening so quickly and you you just don't you don't really it doesn't you don't feel it until later in times like for yeah. example working with kevin was great yeah. i went from seeing his he was the first stand up my uncle ever showed me mm-hmm. i've seen him on tv my whole entire life then seeing him in person it's all very casual like you and i are talking yeah. super casual it's nothing crazy you, it didn't hit me until 5 days later when i was back home i was like oh that's my when you goodness. had the panic attack oh for sure okay. that's when I, I we always say it's like a hand and knees moment where you're like oh my goodness like it was <laughs> it was a lot of that where after i was that was, was a, a bird. That was person. a crow. Okay, right by the I was. I went. Oh yeah, cool. That was a human. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, I. Uh, yeah, when that happened, I was really like, that was that was Kevin Hart. That was that, crazy. That that really just happened. Yeah, that very much just happened. Yeah. Do we? Uh, I'd love to post for it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm trying to get this in. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully have the cover coming in here very soon. Right? Oh, but you said that, that about crazy. Cool. Where, 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 where is it? 
It, I just messaged, man. It's, I mean, it should be here. Is, is it going to be here? Soon. Okay, yeah, it, yeah. Like, the, the cover at least. It, the was, the it Mac, was here. Do we know it, if Amanda's here? It was here in she's the here. office. It was she's here in the office that disappeared. Coming. She's coming. Mateo she's coming. did she's something bring, with this. She's you bringing know? it. She's bringing she's it. Br- right. She's bringing it right now? Yeah, we got I mean, we got to get it on camp. Oh. I'm genuinely excited. She actually, I, none of us have seen the issue yet. Really? None of us. You Whoa. are. We are all seeing the issue for the first time. Oh, this time is cool. Together. I'm very happy she, I can share this with you guys. And Doug. Shout out, Doug. I love you. Oh yeah, uh, he's got her online. I, I think. mean, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, no. Yeah. Okay. Here Ready? Go. Here you go. Oh no! Oh. Shot. Are you kidding me? It's that big. Whoa. No. Let me get the magazine. Let me get the box. Thank you. Are we messing this up, you guys? What? Dude, my heart is actually racing right now. <laughs> oh, we got an audience. We got wow. an audience. We got... This is crazy. Are you okay with an audience? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Because wow. they're not hidden behind a phone screen. Right. No, yeah, very yeah. intimidating when they're in front of me. I, I mean, this is, you're, you're, the, you're doing the honors. There's no way. Are honors. you guys kidding me? I think he's got to see that one first, or does he have to see this one first? It's an unboxing. Oh, it's it's got to be the box. Okay. It's got to be. Welcome to the ASMR unboxing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move my pickle pizza. The That's a real sentence, librarian is going to open his <laughs> right, box. Exactly. Put your I reading just, glasses on. I was just about to say, I wish I had my glasses on me. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay. Let me make sure I do this the right way. This is. Oh, wow. Again, normally for uh, funny enough, and I'm so serious for most things, I can keep my cool. I'm actually shaking. This is really wild. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> you look Yo! good. You look really good. What? <laughs> oh my goodness, this is crazy. Where's Where's the camera? <laughs> this is. Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so cool. Look at that. That. <laughs> look at this. Oh, that is, I mean, you think about, I mean, look, you've, you've come along. That was the most genuine, most beautiful reaction that it possibly could have <laughs> ever made. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And now, now should we bring in the very, very big version? Okay. Yeah, obviously. And, and on obviously. the chair, you will forever, or at least for 12 months until we cycle through our magazines that are on the cover, um, be on the wall of San Diego Magazine's office. <laughs> over, back, over there, over there, over there. Let, let, let Jordan do it. Let Jordan. Do it. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. This is too. This is too much, man. This is crazy. What do you think Mom's gonna think? Oh, she's gonna cry. I, uh, I'm. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry right now. This is insane. Oh my goodness. There it goes. Jordan Howlett, <laughs> cover star extraordinaire of San Diego. Oh man, so it's been a good couple years, man. You got a lot of them left. This is so crazy. I'm sorry. This is insane. To be fair, you have the coming up too. Dude, man, you look great. Dude, that's <laughs> hard. You guys, you guys did that. Thank you. This is but crazy. It's you guys did this. Thank you guys all so much. This is insane. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about that now. Okay, you get it then. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, our CEO. Yeah. Oh, this is the cutest moment. I'm done. I love it. <laughs> I am telling you. Try to get up. This is insane. This is insane. Oh my goodness. It's sick, right? I'm shaking. So good. Wow, thank you guys so much. This is insane. Am I allowed to take a picture? It'll stay in my public account. Oh, it's going out to the streets, man. You can get it. Yeah. This is insane. Can we put it out? No, no, no. No, no, we can't put it out. No, we can't. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Our have not revealed it yet. <laughs> it's just, I mean, look, it's cool, man. At the end of the day, you know, I, I read, I read a story. I read, I read a story on a, on a real. Oh yeah, we're doing a podcast. I, I genuinely, for like two seconds, I'm like, what do I do with my body right now? That's pretty awesome. This man. is so cool. Thank you guys all so much. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, dude, th- thank you for taking part in it. I mean, it's 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 funny. I read something with a really, I, it was a massive, massive celebrity that had been, you know, had had so many successes and, and had been in, you know, on you know Sunset Boulevard on you know billboards. And he said, "There's nothing like the magazine being on the cover of the magazine in your hometown where you grew up." He's like, "That's where you make it." And I don't want to over-aggrandize San Diego magazine, you know, and make this about ourselves. But there is something special about just the place that you grew up in. Oh, yes. you know, it's like your friends are going to see this at like you know, Ralph's. You know what I mean? This is. 
it's I, and you said it perfect. You said it best, and then you asked it before. I don't think I answered it appropriately. Where you said, uh, "How does it feel to have you know this to be my first cover?" Um, it just it feels perfect because again, it's it's San Diego. This is this is where I started. This is where I'm at. This is where I want to be, and I'm I'm just so so grateful. Hey, you got the little tel- Del Taco pocket square. That was that man. That, <laughs> that, that was, I'm telling you, man. This is so this is so perfect. There you I'm, go. I'm, Oh my God! <laughs> this is crazy, yo, D- oh, Doug. Look at this. This you, is you, nuts. You're man. the centerfold, man. That, that's it. That's this it. Is, oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Oh, um, I forgot what I was saying. I uh, this is crazy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for yeah. being part thank of you it. Guys. Yeah, you guys. Thank me. you yeah. guys, man. Again, I, like, like I said before, I know this. This is a pivotal important moment in my life and I'm, I'm just so grateful it was with you guys and I'm grateful you guys handled it the way you did well I think so look Thank at the you. end of the day the, the hardest thing is to get people to trust you talked about your trust issues early on mm-hmm. you know like and everybody's got them I think you know of that's it's a universal thing you know but but if you can be the kind of you know if you, you let us you trusted us to tell your story yes you know and that's I mean that's all we can hope for as a media company you're like you come here you, you know that you're gonna you know um, feel heard you know, feel Very respected, much. feel graced, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. You know that you have feel that freedom to actually talk the way you want to talk. Yeah. And I don't think you have any problem talking <laughs> the way you want to talk, <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, what is the the final question for me? I guess you know is like, where do you want? Where do you want to take this? You know, I mean, I know that you. you have, it's, it's going bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna go away now. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, either way, people have connected with your storytelling in. in a, to an nth degree that it doesn't matter sure everybody has their moments and they up their career will go up and down and every, everything else but they're never they're, you're never going to lose that uh, a core amount of huge amount of people who are like I just connect with this person so you're going to be able to tell stories in some format um, of your choosing I would imagine you yes. want to do movies do you want to do movies, movies? Um, I mean, all of it. I'm I'm a major cinephile. I love movies more than anything else. My yeah. the only thing I can I do in my off time if it is not this is going to see a movie. Yeah, it's the only thing that can take that can give my brain that time out. Yeah, because mm-hmm. when I'm not in a movie, it's constantly going. And uh, I love movies. I'd love to be a part of Airbnb anything. for your brain. Uh, pretty much, man. It's mm-hmm. like I, I love movies. I love TV. I, I mean, it, it, anything like that. And uh, and you're right. I mean, there's ebbs and flows to careers. Sure. And but the one thing that I think as as even content creators that, that are maybe watching this or maybe going through it, the one thing that I you fail to realize is, you know, this is a marathon. Not not only just mm-hmm. this, but even if you stop making videos today, yeah, there's always gonna you're gonna go out somewhere and there's going to be somebody that's gonna say like, I loved your stuff. Let me take a picture with you. Mm-hmm. So that's not something yeah, you can, exactly. you're ever gonna be like, well, all yeah. right, we're kind of done. I can just be a regular exactly. person again. So, yep. um, understanding that with this, there's there's a lot of pros. There's a lot of responsibilities. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cons. A lot of work. Right, a lot of work. That, that yeah. There's a lot of responsibility towards who's watching you and, yeah. and what you're going to do to make sure that you're keeping that. And and this is, again, for, for moments like this, this is why you know we do, we do it so that our audience can see this and be like, oh my goodness, the guy that I related to, yeah. like he's he, he's doing he's doing something. That's Because yeah. you feel like you're going together and that's how it feels. So. Um, yeah, and together, I mean, look, your San Diego, your San Diego story, we're about San Diego. I mean, yeah. this is... It, doing it together, lifting up the voices in the city, and then showing off ones that have risen, especially out of the last couple of years, which have been absolute crap. You know, <laughs> having the, the, the pandemic hit and having the good parts of it come out. You being one of the great parts and that great voice, that great connection and storytelling that we needed in a really dark time. I'm glad that we were able to do this, man. So thank you so much for taking part of it. Now, I think the, what we got to finish on is a little lighthearted note. Um, Two people, 50 bucks. I, didn't, I think we're kind of springing this one on you. Uh, but every episode, we do two people, 50 bucks. It'd be two people, $400. It can do, be two people, $3. Okay. You just, if your place in San Diego that you want, that you love to go eat, what's the spot that when you, you know, when you're talking to a friend, somebody's coming into town, you're like, oh, man, you know where I got to take you? This is my favorite. It, the whole, it could be a hole in the wall. It could be a beautiful restaurant. I'm going right. to give you a second because I just sprung that on you. Yeah. Do you have a two people, 50 bucks? Where's your spot from, from this week? You got anything? Um, two people, 50 bucks. Um, depending on like how much I want to stretch that fifty bucks, mm-hmm. like I'm Nico's in OB, man. Like it, it, that's the first okay. place that comes to mind every time. It's it's uh it's just that legit. That you know, it's a classic. family favorite. My kid's great grandma has been going there for since the seventies. Generations, literally. Yeah. It's literally a multi generational place in my family. So, what do you order? Breakfast burrito. No breakfast question. Burrito. No okay. question. It, 
Night or day. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, where would you tell people to go? Where do you eat in Oceanside? Oceanside or no? Uh, Oceanside. And I, Mateo experienced it with me. It's Stratford by the Harbor. It's my favorite breakfast place. The people there are amazing. They're genuine. It gives a kind of like hole in the wall feel. But the food has not ever disappointed me one time. I still don't know how they make their – they have a pancake there. Mm-hmm. It is a cinnamon roll bacon pancake. And for some oh, reason yeah. – I've tried this recipe out a handful of times. I can't get it like they got it. So mm-hmm. it's I always legit. take people there. It's good. It is legit. It's very good. So again, shout out to Stratford by the Harbor. If you guys are in Oceanside, go there. It's it's amazing. Okay, right on. And I don't even have one this week. I wanted you guys to oh. uh, put to put in yours. I'm gonna say that pickle that pickle pizza. Pickle pizza. Oh good. yeah, are you, are you, we didn't you didn't try the pickle pizza, man. We'll we'll, we'll send you we'll send you some home. For I'm gonna mom. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. We're eating it like halfway through. I'm like, oh cool, we're not eating this pickle yeah. pizza. <laughs> I mean, there's two boxes. You are there's more than two boxes. I'll, 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 I'll take one back. And be like, right. Guys, you'll never think what I got. Yeah. All, right. All right. So, and uh, not that, that anybody needs to be told this. Um, what is your Instagram handle where people can find you? Of course. It's uh, Jordan underscore the underscore stallion in the number eight. Awesome. That's TikTok. That's Instagram. That's all the big ones. Cross the mm-hmm. board. Yes, sir. Do you want people to find you? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> at Oh No Mateo, if you really are curious. But uh, yeah. And I'm at Hey Troy Johnson. Um, thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your story. Um, and we're honored to have you on the Best Restaurants Cover, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. All right, man. Guys. Thank you, Mateo. That's it. That's it. We'll see you guys next week.